Today, Rachel Talbot and I got to meet up with Olympic silver medalist Sasha Cohen at Yoga Work Studio to talk about what her life has been like after the Olympics. And she even showed us some of her favorite yoga moves. So today we are here at Yoga Works in Newport Beach with Sasha Cohen, who is an Olympic skater, and we are very excited to talk to you about your life and what you have accomplished. So my first question was about balance and how you balance being a student and also living a healthy lifestyle. I think one of the biggest excuses that people have is like they don't have time to stay in shape. So how do you balance the two? It is difficult. Um, I am going to be a sophomore at Columbia University. And it's, it is a challenge when you have to read two books and write a paper right. and you're like, wait, when am I going to get to the gym? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you really have to learn to be efficient with your time mm -hmm. and when you sit down, be productive. And you know, I find that the breaks make you more productive. I'll take mm -hmm. a break, I'll go run for an hour, come back and you know, study for three hours, then go to a yoga class. And you know, I'm in a very you know, a transitory phase of my life where I'm coming from being an Olympic athlete, from touring, you know, eight months a year to moving to a new city, making new friends, being a you know, first year student and sometimes it's, I'm stressed out. So when I get to go to yoga, it's that break to not think, to, to be guided through, you know, a set of poses and kind of center within, find calm. And, and have a great workout as well. What about your diet? Like how about, how do you keep your um, diet regime? What was the difference like when you were training? Obviously it was probably very so strict. strict. Yes. Do you like kind of have cheat days now? Or do you like- Definitely, when I, when I trained and competed, I was so strict and then moving to New York, it kind of opened up. But when I competed, you know, it would be three egg whites with, you know, like mushroom and spinach for breakfast. A snack would be half an apple and five almonds. And then wow. lunch would be like a salad with balsamic vinegar and grilled chicken. And then it would be wow. a grapefruit for a snack and then like steamed vegetables and fish. So it was like- It's like the perfect- It was so wow. specific, but it was also, it was very hard, you couldn't go out to a restaurant and order something because, mm. you know, they cook everything in oil. Right, and it's true. And the portions are bigger, but, you know, it, it really works and it was satisfying because, you know, you could you ha eat, eat as many vegetables as you needed to be full. I find that, you know, I, I l love eating that way. And so even now, you know, I, I have egg white omelets for breakfast and I love like big chopped salads. Um, it just, it makes you feel good and it's really clean and fresh. But I think a big factor in healthy eating is making it taste good. Oh, because if you have, you know, yeah. healthy salads are just prepared badly, it just makes you not want to eat healthy. Feel like a rabbit just yeah. gnawing on a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk about skin, like skin care. I mean, um, how do you, what are some of your tips to taking care of your skin? Well, since a, a very young age, I grew up, you know, or in a plaster uh, face of makeup, you know, <laughs> yeah. for shows and, yeah. and competitions. So you really have to take care of your skin well. My mom always taught me about skin care and how you need to like wash your face and yeah. tone your face and sunblock very important, yeah. you know, so that you don't get sunspots and wrinkles. You know, I always do like a hot washcloth at the end of like after I wash my face and just let it sit on my face, kind of like opens your pores yeah, yeah. and, you know, I, and I change my skincare uh, products depending on where I am. Like okay. if I'm in New York and it's very, very humid, I'll use things that are a little bit tougher and that will get, you know, the oil off versus Smart. if I'm somewhere really dry. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I just listen to my skin and I try out different products. And you know, I try to get things that like added fragrances and that are just mm -hmm. very hydrating. I think it's really interesting how you're kind of doing it backwards where most people like, go to school and then we find our careers yeah. and then we just work at it. While for you, you started at such an early age, skating at the age of seven, right? Mm -hmm. And you found your career, you did everything so amazingly well, and now you're going on a new path and going to school, which I think it's really interesting. The further I get away from my two Olympic games, the more I appreciate it. And just watching uh, the London Olympics on TV and mm -hmm. Realizing, you know, you give your whole life to an Olympic Games and the, that pursuit, and you learn sacrifice. I stopped going to regular school in seventh grade, and I was homeschooled. You know, you, you miss the dances and going to the movies with your friends and going oh. to college, and it's just you you train so hard that you're so tired, you just go to bed, and it's this Groundhog Day for 20 years, mm -hmm. and I think it it really builds your character and it teaches you to pursue what you believe in and learn how to dedicate yourself to something that you think um, you know, is worthy of your life. And, and from that, it makes it very difficult to transition back into normal life because you, you strive to find that purpose again right. and that, that intensity of, of the way that you live. So people are like, don't worry, relax. Like, just give yourself a few years, explore, go to school, you'll figure it out. <laughs> 
you know, I'm like already just like a freshman. I'm like, but what am I going to do? <laughs> so I'm learning. I'm learning to yeah. unwind, and yoga helps me with that. Yoga. Again, with yoga. Again, I can't wait to try yoga. this out. I know. I've been in my, like, my yoga kick lately. So when you see people that have been practicing yoga for many years, like what they can do with yeah. their body and the, the balance and the strength that they have, yeah. you're just like, I need to do some more yoga. We were talking about it before, how it's, it's both very physically strengthening, but also very right. mentally. Mental. It's, it's very, it's kind of a combination of both because you really have to focus mentally. And I think a lot of people have this perception of yoga that it's easy. Like, oh, yoga, that's not a good workout. Or other people, they tell me, oh, it's very hippie-ish. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's so many kinds of yoga. You know? Right, and, right. And I think it's become more mainstream. Yeah. And when people try it, they get hooked. You know, it's like there is this image, you know, very granola yoga yeah. <laughs> type of image. But when you go to the class and you, I think you take it for yourself and, you know, you have a great teacher, they lead you through, they kind of help you find peace within yourself. And a lot of them have amazing playlists. I need that in my life right now. Yeah. You're the just, peace, the calm, you know. Yeah. You're talking this up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm excited to try it. Let's, let's try some yoga. We have an amazing teacher today, uh, Tony Wilkie, um, going to lead us through some positions and some flows. And um, hopefully you guys will be hooked on yoga. I want you guys to meet Tony. Hi. Hi, Tony. Hi, guys. Rachel and Michelle. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. And they've never done yoga before, so I'm really excited for them to try. The cool thing about yoga is it, it uh, meets you wherever you are because you get to adapt the way you feel to, you know, your poses. Well, we're gonna start in child's pose. So we're gonna kneel down, sit on your heels, and then you're gonna let your forehead rest on the mat. Spread your fingers open nice and wide, and then come onto the hands and knees. Curl your toes under, and we're gonna elevate the hips. So lift the hips up, and then walk your hands back to your feet and slowly roll yourself up. I've seriously never done yoga before. Trust me, I try to get a hang of it. Float the arms up. Good, really lift up and out of the, the uh, lower back. Good. And uh, you know, it's a great way to sculpt and tone the lower body. Look up, exhale, fold. You're gonna release your hands on the mat. Aww, Whoa, snap. how do you do that? Thank you so much, uh, Tony, for leading us in this class. You're welcome, and my pleasure. One of my favorite vinyasa flow teachers Thank in yoga you. Course, so. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. It's Thank great you. to have you. So, namaste. Thanks so much to Sasha for spending time with us and special thanks to Rachel, a new addition here on Fawn.